One in nine Singaporeans will consider obese. It does seem like a losing battle. Hey, you looking at me fat. Uh? I won't feel good receiving that, you know? We actually term it as a complex disease. What the heck? Are you snacking too much? <laughs> this is your daily catch-up. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> So I think that we've all dealt with weight problems like at some point in our lives, right? But it turns out that there is a lot more to it than eating too much and exercising too little. And today we have an endocrinologist, Dr. Tay Toon Lin, to tell us more about that. Welcome to the show! Welcome to Dr. Tay! Welcome Dr. Tay! What is endocrinologist? <laughs> yeah, it is a mouthful and nobody actually knows what it is. Nobody go and Google huh? what is endocrinology, uh, la, right? Because they cannot spell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I. So for endocrine, right, we actually look at the hormone system. Uh, we look at conditions that are influenced by our hormones. For example, the commonest thing would be things like diabetes, thyroid. So those are the things that are bread and butter for endocrine. La. But uh, obesity is another major um, condition that we look into. So when you say hormones, right, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> so oh, what a a <laughs> I didn't think, by the way, but yeah. Okay, yeah. So hormones are actually, um, you can think of it as messages la, from our body, one part of the organ to the rest of the body to tell the body to function properly. So when yeah. they talk about like boys and girls relationship, they say, oh, mm. it's their hormones talking. Like, what's, what's that mean actually? <laughs> like, which part of the hormones are we talking about? Well, I would suppose that would be uh, more our female male hormones hormones that oh. drive our uh, libido, you know, things like that. Lah. But do you think being a doctor in this makes you like very detached from your emotions? Because it's just, you know that it's, it's just chemical. A, yeah, a chemical <laughs> response. Well, we are humans too. <laughs> so we do uh, are affected by uh, our own hormones as well. Yeah, but uh, I mean, it is it does help us to um, realize that uh, there are a lot of things which are influenced by things that are in the subconscious. Right. So um, our behavior towards things like uh, our mood, our f towards our relationship with food even, can be driven by certain hormones that are in our body at play. So yeah. you're saying like all of our behavior, everything that we do, I a don't like the word all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> most <laughs> most of them doctors. A lot so, of the things. Yeah, a lot of the things that most of the things that we do can be explained through like, oh, this is like a particular hormone that is being activated. There are certain things uh, that are influenced by genetics, by our hormones. Uh, but of course, there are other aspects as well, like our uh, environment, the things uh, psychologically, okay so these are other aspects that do affect our behavior our responses too long when i first heard about the episode that we were going to be doing today i was very fascinated because i've i've struggled my fair share with with like weight and all this kind of stuff also right since you study this right is it an an arising issue that we need to be concerned about mm. oh I can answer that actually. Oh. Yeah. Did like, she come here for it? Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> right, let me just let me just kick you off with some stats. The Ministry of Health releases a national population health survey every year, and in the 2022 edition, page 89, it showed that 11.6 percent, or one in nine Singaporeans, were considered obese. Yeah, and on top of that, 22.3 percent of them were also in the high risk BMI oh. category. So, in context, is that a, a very high number? Or is it... Uh... I mean, if we are talking about trend, right? Um, 10 years ago, I think the numbers were around half of what this is. Okay, okay, okay. So we are seeing a, a trend towards increasing number of uh, patients who are obese or overweight. What yeah. do you think is causing the trend? Number one, in the last three, four years, COVID didn't help. The pandemic didn't help. The dentary, okay, we are stuck at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So I do see quite a few patients turning up my clinic after this entire pandemic they have gained 10 kgs already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So besides that, a lot of other environmental things are also at play. Our stress levels have gone up. A lot of uh, processed foods that are easy to access are also present. Stress levels, when it goes up, psychologically, some people may actually come go to food for comfort as well. La. Is there like a cause of weight gain that people don't realise is causing the weight gain? Mm. There are certain endocrine conditions that may predispose patients to weight gain also. So for example, um, hypothyroid, if patients have low thyroid hormone levels, they can have a uh, few kilos of weight gain. Mm. Um, mm. Patients who have 
underlying polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is a common, um, you know, hormonal disruption in females. Also, or PCOS. Yes, PCOS. PCOS. Yeah, it can also predispose <laughs> patients to gain weight too. Yeah, so for all these uh, conditions, we try to make sure we don't miss them and treat them appropriately because the root cause is important. And so since we're on the topic of obesity, right? How is obesity measured? A few ways. One of them is uh, by our weight, of course. And we um, uh, calculate their BMI, body mass index, weight mm. over height square. Yeah, that will give us a BMI. And uh, if we have a BMI above 30, that's considered obese. Above uh, um, 23.5 is actually uh, overweight. But how accurate is that? Because mm. depending on the composition, what if it's all like muscle mass and it's not fat? Yeah, so besides that, right, uh, besides the weight alone, we also look at the patient's waist circumference. So waist circumference, if it's beyond for gentlemen, if it's beyond 90 centimeter in the Asian context, too too big already, lah, okay? Oh. Then uh, for ladies, if it's above 80 centimeter. Lor. For me, right, like I'm, I'm clearly I am I classify myself as fat, but then I don't think like I am very unhealthy in the sense that like I do experience like shortness of breath, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right. So at what point is obesity a like medical problem? Mm. Unfortunately, obesity uh, is not a single dimension. Uh. Right. There's just multiple factors at play. So that's why we, we actually term it as a complex disease equivalent to any other diseases like diabetes, high blood pressure, a chronic disease. And it's actually a complex chronic disease. And we know that it's a root cause of many, many conditions, cancers, um, mechanical problems, sleep apnea, diabetes, high blood, heart attacks. So all these actually come from the first condition, which is um, obesity as a yeah. disease. We do classify obesity according to some stages as well. Oh. Yeah, there's some classification that we actually use, la, the Edmonton Obesity Score. La. The what? Edmonton Obesity like Score. Like badminton without the B? <laughs> E-D, la, e -D -M -O -N. Oh, okay. <laughs> Close, close. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and it gives us some idea, okay, how um, intensively do we need to intervene in this person's health, la, okay? Right. So if the person is, let's say, uh, stage zero, overweight or obese, but quite healthy, you know, but if we go up the stages, we may want to be more aggressive in our approaches to manage them. Oh, like what? When you say aggressive, aggressive like la, what, okay. we, so, what are your methods? <laughs> them having um, diabetes already or if they are having heart attacks, we may actually want to say, hey, I think you need a bit of medications to help you out to lose and maintain the weight. Or even if their BMI um, is really very high, we may even talk about bariatric surg surgeries okay, to help them lose the weight. La. I think for the people with, say, like diabetes and all that kind of stuff, it's quite clear cut in the sense that, okay, if you don't make changes to your lifestyle, then there are going to be adverse effects. But I'm not, I'm thinking what I'm more interested in is the people who, I think a bit like Denise, who aren't feeling anything and then they don't really have a push factor to mm. uh, make changes in their life. Like, and then if you tell people, oh, it's all about behavioral change, mm. she can't get herself out of that environment where she's stressed and she needs to eat which is like say the workplace and there's a pantry over there mm. oh my god you need to walk past the pantry to get to the toilet every day <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem the company is the problem we only store vegetable sticks plans, now guys. <laughs> can, when we move yeah. can you just design Confirm. like put in the <laughs> corner <laughs> <laughs> Remove the pantry. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think uh, for patients who are metabolically still healthy, I think it's, it's about um, um, sending a message that, you know, long term, if the weight carries on increasing, it will actually reduce their lifespan. I think it's also about finding meaning to that person. If that person um, feels tired all the time, you know, um, is the weight actually contributing to the lethargy? And if he man or he or she manages to lose a couple of kilos, is that going to improve the quality of life for that person? When I try to take a step back and look at the bigger picture, we look at the food industry, we look at all of this, right, and, and consumerism and whatnot, and it does seem like uh, a losing battle mm. because <laughs> fast food and all this, right, like how are you going to beat this, right? They have found a way to make people addicted to it already and, it, and it's so accessible, like it's, it's so cheap. It's so mm. delicious. Versus... <laughs> Yeah, it's so delicious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. After this, McDonald's. Okay. But, yeah. hey, and yeah. then, right, you look at healthy food. Is it accessible? It's more expensive. It's yeah. More expensive, yeah. And, and everything seems to go against profit and mm. the goals of these industries. Mm. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? 
Well, I will say that um, we do have to make uh, mindful decisions. Lah, okay, if we want to see change in ourselves or in our patients, we need to guide them and to um, uh, ask them to seriously think about like health consequences and make uh, every decision a mindful one you know we can't just blindly follow um, and, and expect that hey we are going to lose weight tomorrow because we continue to make the same decision, decisions today as uh, as yesterday yeah fast food joints are everywhere but would you be able to prioritize yourself to maybe instead of walking past that fast food joint take a detour <laughs> so that you don't oh, um, don't remind yourself, yourself of it you know? outside, outside of mind yeah. 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 so I think ways like that lah, okay if you really want to change I think you have to make a way lah. No, so but, I think mm. if like uh, like as a simple step right if say tomorrow I want to eat, start eating better and then now I go to the Thai fan store what should I order? <laughs> she say don't go to the Thai fan store <laughs> 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 no, 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 can eat like say if everyday I, I no choice I have to eat out because in the Singaporean society mm. then like no time to cook then I'm very busy yeah. yeah then what are my options? I understand a lot of patients are like that too and uh, I, I do empathize I mean we, we, we go through the same thing as well so I think um, if we are at uh, let's say a hawker centre Center. Um, so what are the things that we can choose from in terms of the the, the choices that we have Yong that will be a little bit better <laughs> something lighter okay uh, try to avoid the deep fried food in, and also it's about portion control so can we try to maybe opt for a lesser um, a portion rather than eating the full meal yeah, so can we try that right. and make it something that's sustainable uh, some middle ground that we can go for so what do you eat for lunch? Me ah, mm. oh, I would eat like three <laughs> cartons of pizza. A metabolism just never high. Yeah, I had noodles. Yeah, so a portion of noodles. Yeah, and then that's about it. So oh. yeah, so you can eat. Like Normal. you don't have to stick to like healthy, healthy, super clean stuff and all that. Like. I think where J- where I resonate with what Jared said is that to me, I feel like I struggle because it's so much psychological to me. Like you mm. know, for example, you say like to make the mindful choice to choose to eat something cleaner or healthier, right? Or portion better. Mm. But then to me, whenever I think about it, it's like, okay, I, I say um, tomorrow I'm going to cut down sweet drinks. Then this whole week, I only drink sweet drinks twice a week, for example. Mm. But after that, later, I think like, I, I really want to drink like a taping today. And I think I'll be much happier if I drink a taping. So then I give in to drinking the taping, you know? Mm. Yeah. We are humans, uh, so I think it is... Difficult to um, know, uh, say, be so disciplined all the time. Mm. So I think we also need to have some compassion on ourselves. And uh, <laughs> we also try to give compassion to our patients. It's not easy to walk uh, the, their path. Lah, okay? mm. So sometimes we may have to give a bit of uh, leeway. But in the end, it's about okay, planting the seed and making sure that they try to keep to it. Lah, okay? Make small steps and and have targets. So I think we try to set some targets, achievable ones, and see whether they can try and uh, uh, reach there in small ways. La. Are there like, maybe what are three questions that I should ask myself, right, to check whether I am eating mindfully? Because the one that I usually hear is the, are you really hungry? But I mean, I'm not sure whether there are more specific ones that or more effective ones that we can use. Yeah, I think asking yourself, okay, are you really hungry in the first place? Yeah, do you need to eat now? Are you just eating because um, you're bored? You know, what's the reason for you wanting to go to the pantry? Okay, so why am I eating? Yeah, why are you eating? Why are you going to the pantry and looking for food? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that's one. Uh, then the other one is, uh, can I slow down? <laughs> yeah. So you failed the first step. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, like, okay, yeah. can I eat it slower? <laughs> yeah, okay. can I eat it slower? Because, because your mind needs 20 minutes to register when yeah. you're full. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. So we do need a bit of time, you know, to for our brain to understand, hey, actually I'm full already. Huh? And give you the... There's the a delay. Yeah, they always say eat slower. Don't... Then, then if not right now, my brain already knows this, why can't it update? Because <laughs> <laughs> your hormones, they message each other. Stupid. The body's working against me. Yeah. All the time. It's a bit slow. Like, yeah. The yeah. heck? You do need to slow. give your body a bit of time. Huh? Okay, okay. Can yeah. I eat slower? And then third one, can third I tap out? <laughs> <laughs> can, can I, I have this for dinner? You really have to have one more. Does Jared want the half of this? Yeah. Can I share this? I do this? my own mindful <laughs> thinking and then like it's official. And then, uh, you know, if your body telling you it's full, I mean, am I full? Can I actually stop now? Yeah. Mm, okay. Why am I eating? Can I slow down? Should I stop now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it all seems like... Okay, yeah. let's go. Yeah. You buy your last piece of anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least you need one step. Lah. Especially with weight loss, right? Like, I've, I've heard people say that 
it has everything to do with diet and nothing to do with exercise. How true is that? I think we, we do need both hand in hand. Um, diet has a greater effect in helping us to lose weight really quickly. If we restrict our calories, yeah, we're going to see our weight come down you know, just after two, two to four weeks. Lah. But wow. uh, if we only <laughs> emphasize on calorie uh, restriction and not in building our muscles, once we start losing our weight, we would see that our metabolism actually slows down. Our body says, hey, we lost weight. We need to slow down our uh, resting metabolic rate. And therefore, your uh, metabolism actually slows down. You see that your weight plateaus or even start to regain. We need the muscle mass to help us to increase the, the body's metabolism. Lah. So we do need the exercise too to be able to help us maintain the weight that we've lost. Mm. But so can you get into that a bit? Because uh, I think a lot of people don't understand how carbs is like sh- convert not- into sugar. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Like I only recently learned that and I still don't fully understand, right? Oh. But to me, whenever I read all the nutritional facts, right, like I see carbs as a bad thing. It's true that, you know, carbs get broken down into sugars in our body. And if someone has diabetes, it can cause a spike in the sugars. Okay? okay. But we can't run away from carbs as well. Yep. So we try to go for a moderate portion of healthy carbs, brown rice, okay, wholemeal breads, uh, sourdough, yeah, so these are uh, better wow. options compared to things like, uh, you know, the fast food kind of... Um, mashed potato. Yeah, mashed potato. <laughs> Fries. Wow, I had it Correct. yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, stop saying the nice stuff. <laughs> <laughs> why is sugar bad? Can I say that? Why is or sugar why is, bad? Yeah, too much sugar bad or why is sugar bad? Yeah. Um, of course, if there's too much sugar circulating in the body, it has to go somewhere, right? And a lot of times that gets deposited as fats in our body, either under the skin or around our major organs. Mm, okay? mm. So excessive calories or excessive sugars, you know, turn into fats, unfortunately. Yeah? So that's why I think we do have to be a bit mindful lah, about portion. So that means if I look at it, right, <coughs> I have protein, fat and carbs, right? All the carb will become sugar, they will then become fat. Then the fat will be fat. So carbs <laughs> also gets used up by our body as energy too. So if you're exercising our muscles, our brain, we actually do need the sugars to uh-huh. function properly. But anything in excess will, you know, get deposited into fat. fat. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Actually on the topic of like, Metabolism, right? Is it true that because I got some friends who, you know, they <laughs> they they're skinny and then they eat whatever they want, they eat more unhealthy than me and they never get fat. Mm. Then they just say, Oh, it's my metabolism law. Mm. But then meanwhile, I am here, right? Like I have to work out six days a week, I have to watch my diet, and then the minute I get off that diet, right, like maybe I give myself, okay, it's Christmas break, I want to just eat rest for five days, and then I see the weight just shoot mm. back. Eh. I think it's quite true, unfortunately. Ah! Yeah. They are, they are genetically, so we do have friends who make us very, very jealous because they are just <laughs> eating next to you and then you are down there trying to yeah. cut your calories. So it is a little bit sad. I know lah. I mean, this is what <laughs> we always say, right? Just try to be disciplined and all. I cannot emphasize this enough, but think long term law. Must think long term for your health lah. Okay. Uh, for health, uh, not aesthetic. Uh. <laughs> no, but the aesthetic but, is a bonus. But I'm wondering, right, because I mean, you've seen so many patients and we talked about, I think in other episodes, we have also mentioned that a big reason why people cannot sustain weight loss is because they're doing it for the wrong reasons. Mm. And even in our discussion today, it also does bounce back a little to like aesthetic purposes and all that. So amongst your patients that you have seen or the people that you have helped, right, what do you think is the most common, almost effective switch that flips in their head, right? Mm. That really gets their mind into the right mindset. I think uh, sometimes uh, we do need a push. Mm. So for example... Um, Ask your friend to keep telling you you're fat. <laughs> you know, or take the dog hostage. No, well, <laughs> things like, uh, okay, they just had a new baby. So they may start thinking, hey, I really have trouble trying to um, play with my kids. I can't even carry my my child properly. Quality of life issues. La, right, okay? right. And uh, I think thinking long term, okay, can I see my child grow up? Now I already have pre-diabetes at 30, for Whoa. example. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So um, 10 years down the line, am I uh, going to be as healthy? Will I still be there for my child? You know, things like that. La. So, so, you know, maybe <laughs> thinking in terms of... Uh, Guilt. Not guilt, la, but uh, <laughs> what motivates you to, what gives you meaning in life, la, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what is a healthy, like, rate of, of weight, weight loss. loss that you should have, like, yeah. because I always, like, want to lose 5, kg, five a kg, month. like, oh. in one month, that kind of thing. Mm, but, okay. like, I don't, I think in my experience, that has not been 
sustainable or feasible. Mm. So about 5 to 10% of your baseline weight over the next three to six months, that's um, generally considered healthy. Oh, okay. Yeah, slow and steady. La. 7 kg in six months. Uh. Oh, if I'm, say, 70 kg, mm. then... <laughs> you <laughs> expose your... <laughs> oh so God. you're 70 kg? I'm 70 kg. What the heck? I'm almost 20 kg heavier than you. Eh? No way! <laughs> but you're taller. No lah. By 2 cm. Uh. Okay, okay, sure, sure, sure. So if I'm 70 kg, then... To lose 10%, that will take six months. About one kg per month. Wow. It's the healthy. It's healthy. not how long healthy. it will take to mm. lose. It's healthy amount. That's why you ask her. Then what, what does it mean by unhealthy? That means if I lose mm. weight faster than that, what, then what Yeah, you know, crash diet. Yeah, crash diets. Uh, if you're taking only 800 calories a day, every day for Died one month, before. yeah, you're <laughs> going to drop the weight very, very quickly. But it's not sustainable. And you'll see that, okay, it's going to rebound very fast because you can't keep to 800 calories every day, long term. Yeah. Can I ask, is targeted fat loss a thing? Targeted fat loss. Like you, you say, I only want to lose stomach fat, then I just... Ah. Do... suction. <laughs> <laughs> targeted fat. Right? Well, he's not wrong. Like I just do ab exercises plus diet. Actually, what we want is, um, I mean, not just a, the number changing on the scale, lah, it's actually the health outcomes. Oh, right. um, oh yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, we do want to try and bring down the waist circumference because we know that fats deposited over the belly has a higher chance of you uh, developing cardiac problems, cardiovascular disease. Uh, it's mm -hmm. a predictor of that. So, um, yeah, we, we do hope that the inches over the waist can come down. But I think it will come down if we keep to, you know, that, that lifestyle and uh, 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 dietary changes that we mentioned. Lor. Actually, what are your thoughts on the body positivity movement? I think that's been kind of gaining traction in the past few years, right? Of mm. like people who are perhaps uh, their BMI might be higher, but they are saying that I am who Except I am. me for this. Yeah, mm. I am who I am. I don't need to change. Uh -huh. Like from a medical perspective, like what do you think of that kind of trend? I think if you're talking about the, the purpose of uh, body positivity movement in the sense that my self-worth is not tied to my weight, then I think great. That That's a positive message lah okay mm. but um, if you're talking about yeah um, I can uh, not care about my health because I want to accept my weight for what it is maybe we should try to reframe those ideas because um, we do know that they have an impact long term on a person so let's say you're scrolling through TikTok and you see a person with obesity but then they are advocating for what body bodies, positivity body positivity yeah. Yeah. Then how? You leave a comment there. So maybe, <laughs> maybe you... <laughs> well, maybe not to that extent, but uh, <laughs> I, I think... Uh, <laughs> no, but does it not... Because yeah. you, 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 your, this is your specialty, right? Yeah. Which means that you, it's also something you care quite a lot about, right? Mm. So you see something like that, don't you want to like, oh no, let me help you, right? Yeah, of course, if you can try and save everybody, we'll try. Yeah, uh. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but uh, <laughs> I think we also need to see whether a patient is ready or not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that it's just, just a whole kind of like miss or at least not a lot of people know that like you said it's now what regarded as a disease mm. so and I think at least from a medical perspective the whole heart, fact, the whole heart facts are there la, in mm. terms of like it's sure but like this is all the things that it does to you la. yeah and we know like you know when your weight comes down by just five that five percent ten percent oh we can actually see that health benefits already so we don't need the patient to um, you know, go back from a BMI of 30 to 21 or oh. 22 okay. Okay, okay. to get to a healthier state. Yeah. So mm. so we don't need a patient to look like a model, lah, you know. So take one step, don't jump down the staircase. We like, don't have to, yes. Yeah, we just want you to be healthy. So if I notice somebody that I feel like might need help, but I mean, because I'm not a medical professional, I also don't know whether they actually have underlying health problems or whatever, right? But how can I then encourage my friends that I care about to try to do something about it in a way that doesn't embarrass yeah. you know like I cannot, like hey you're looking at me fat like, you know you want to go see a doctor like that's so yeah, I, I won't feel good receiving that you know yes yes yeah. and like sure. we talked about like how it's a disease right a lot of things like rooted in psychological and other environmental factors mm -hmm. yeah then how do, you how do I take that first step you know how yeah, do I encourage, to encourage someone to take the first step la. okay of course don't do it in a group setting ah uh. Don't okay. bring it up. In a good <laughs> That's thing. good advice. Good first start really, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you may want to maybe talk in private to your friend if you're a bit concerned. Like, okay, you saw her last year and she was uh, 
not as heavy. And this year, she definitely looked like she has gained quite a bit of weight. If you notice, oh dear, she even looks a bit breathless on walking. Right. So maybe you could just address the symptoms that you uh, are concerned about. Okay, it's maybe not just the appearance, lah, like, like, but, you know, if she complains, oh, I'm so tired nowadays or, uh, you know, I'm so uh, uh, um, run down nowadays, I might sleep is so poor. You may want oh. to go through those areas and then suggest maybe you should talk to somebody about those symptoms and see whether this 10 kgs that you've gained in the last year yeah. could have contributed to that. Lah. So aside from BMI, also noticing like the symptoms of the issue. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Which I think is a good way to, yeah, to yeah, like, yeah. kind of like not directly yeah, address yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Thank interesting, you. interesting. Sheesh. That's useful. All right, and that's it for today. This episode was brought to you by Novo Nordisk. So a big thank you to them. And of course, Dr. Thank Tay. Thank, thank you. you very much. We hope that today's episode has given you a better understanding of obesity. And for more information, you can head down over to the links below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Snack time. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I've done like weight loss competitions. Yeah, I think, oh, what? Which is, weight loss competitions? Internal la, with my friends. <laughs> yeah, la, but them unhealthy because I chung to lose like, I think 10 kg in like a month that kind of. Like to the point where the day before the weigh-in, right, I go sauna and sweat as much as possible. possible. You know oh, what I mean? You guys really take this seriously? Yeah. No, got money, got price money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then yeah. what and happened I, the month after? I, no, I lost because we didn't do it by percentage of the, the current. Oh. So ah. the, the fattest person, he lose the most. Ma. Yeah. If not, if by percentage, I think I would have won. But then the crazy <laughs> thing is, within less than a week, I gained back almost everything. Oh. Oh. It's that fast. It's crazy. And super unhealthy also.